just a big preface, I know nothing about the government system in Japan or anything political with Japan. So I'm going to, there's probably going to be a lot of things I leave out. This is just going to be a brief overview of the whole situation entirely. So basically what has happened is you see how in America with a bunch of stuff that are coming out now, whether it be in comics or in animated shows or movies and stuff like that, there's a bunch of like pandering, you could say, like a lot of the characters, like their clothing and stuff like that and the way they address each other, it's been dumbed down. As you could say, you know, everything has been changed. It's not the same as it used to be like certain characters, like let's say with like the He-Man show that uh, got, you know, animated. Uh, one of the characters, their clothes is like completely different from what the original was. Just like with the Netflix adaptation of Cowboy Bebop, by the way, rest in peace, Hajime Yatate. So comparing the the original anime, Faye Valentine, to the Netflix adaptation, Val Faye Valentine, the characters clearly have two different outfits. And maybe, yeah, that's also a part of Netflix just being Netflix and fucking up adaptations, but it's also because of this new kind of like PC culture. That, is ch that are wanting, wanting to change the way a lot of characters are seen, which could be a bad thing and could be a good thing. A lot of people have said that, you know, this is why Japan is winning in terms of the entertainment scene, because as we know that uh, there was an article that came out, I think a few months ago, where the manga itself, Demon Slayer, that series has been outselling all of Marvel or all of comic, all of American comics. Yeah, we've seen that come around a few times and we were thinking, okay, this is why Japan is winning. Japan sticks with what they want. You know, Japan does what they want and they will sell it no matter what. But uh, but it turns out Japan is also gonna be hit with a wave of this PC culture. So I don't know exactly when, but uh, there was an article that came out saying how a bunch of officials in Japan they basically said that they wanted to turn down the sexual content shown inside of manga and anime. And of course, we've seen in like, you know, a bunch of shows. Now we have seen that, you know, a lot of a lot of companies, when they change like the uh, dub or the sub for a bunch of these animes, they always change it around to kind of fit a narrative. But this time with this rule that's going to be in place, they're literally trying to change the whole anime entirely. So shows like Prison School, Kill a Kill, High School DxD, shows like that, they are they are seen as like heavily explicit. And Japan nowadays is trying to like kind of tone it down. They don't want that hypersexualized stuff in their shows that they're showing. But then this is where Ken Akamatsu comes in. Ken Akamatsu, who is famous, or you could say infamous in Japan's case now, popular for making shows like Love Hina, Nejima, and UQ Holder, has put his foot down and said that he wants to stop this. So Ken himself said that he wanted to run for official seat to protect creators' uh, freedom of expression, but we don't know if it's one of the 45 Japan districts or if it's a nationwide seat. Since I don't know anything political about the Japanese government, stuff like that, I just want to say, in general, I think that's trying to silence the uh, creators of manga by, you know, just toning, by wanting them to tone down their sexual content and stuff like that. I feel like that shouldn't really be a thing that the government should, like, enforce. It's not like these manga magazines and television broadcasters are publicly showing these uh, series out to everybody. You know, there's different companies for different you know, like age groups, I'm pretty sure. A kid is not gonna read a Jump Force magazine and see High School DxD on it. I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. That being said, a kid is not gonna turn on the TV and see some mountainous titties on the screen. You know, that's, there's a reason why things are kind of separate. There's a reason why there is an age rating for most things either showed on TV or public or made public in like a magazine or something. Just looking completely over at this whole situation as a whole, I have to say, Ken being the one to step up and tell other creators and try to fight for other creators' uh, freedom of expression for in their manga and stuff like that, seeing this is honestly hilarious and I love it because I watched uh, UQ Holder, Love Hira, and uh, Nejima, and I could say for a without a doubt that he is like 
kind of the embodiment of etchy harem romantic comedy you know series he's like the embodiment of that apparently on wikipedia it writes that his work love hina is considered as the origin of harem and manga and anime especially romantic comedy so just like how i said uh back last year that uh Mishoku Tensei is the godfather of isekai anime. Apparently, Ken Akamatsu is the godfather of harem and romance comedy. And I've read his works. He basically is. So that is the kind of news. He actually announced this uh, last week. Today's the 21st when I'm recording this. He announced this on the 16th of December that he was going to run for this uh, seat to fight against this political correctness disease that are that is making its way from America to Japan. Just wish Ken Akamatsu Godspeed because this is a fight that we all should be supporting. So yeah, all in all, uh, I'm just a moron on the internet with an opinion. I feel like this was kind of a thing I should probably like talk about because why not? You know, I want to have some anime on the channel. So let me talk about something that relates to anime, right? Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time I see you.